Martin Bell belongs to the BBC's glorious day before yesterday when whatever one's suspicions about its political inclinations, it had an authority and a gravitas, a weight and a depth unrivaled across the planet. In his famously crumpled white suit, Martin reported wars and conflicts around the world and then came home to get elected to Parliament as an independent anti-sleaze candidate. He knows almost every corner of the globe. If he'd been on the plane next to Novak Djokovic, they'd have done Balkan banter all the way over to Melbourne. So it's a pleasure to see him. And Martin, uh, when you have a CV like yours... Uh, the, it's, it's a bit like the Rolling Stones. There's a great temptation just to talk uh, uh, about the greatest hits. But you, in fact, are working on a new book uh, right now. What's, what's that all about? Uh, Mark, I'm 83 years old, and obviously I'm vulnerable to the plague. So a little bit constricted. I've, I'm aware that a huge challenge is coming, coming into the British monarchy. Uh, as soon as the reign of our wonderful queen is over. So I've been working on a book that is actually a defense of the institutional monarchy. It may be a bit ahead of its time, uh, but I think it's the right time to do it. You're, you're correct about that. This isn't one of those things then where you're writing about what Harry said to Wills about Princess Michael of Kent. You're actually interested in monarchy as an institution. Uh, that, though, does depend on the personality of the sovereign. Everyone in the latter years of uh, Franz Josef's reign in Vienna, for example, had this, without ever stating it too explicitly, didn't think the whole thing would survive uh, once he was gone. How do you feel the House of Windsor is looking right now? Well, actually, it, uh, it happens to the Austrian monarchy. I think the House of Windsor is secure as long as the reign of the present monarch starts. I think as soon as it is over, we're going to get a fierce campaign against it by the Republicans, especially the younger Republicans, and they're, they're allowed to do it. And, and I've been researching this. There's a long history of it. But I think it has to be answered, uh, especially through the absence from public duties of Harry uh, and Andrew for different reasons. Uh, the monarchy as vulnerable as it hasn't been in my lifetime, and therefore it's worth writing about. Yeah, that you're ab absolutely uh, right on that. It's uh, my my youngest kid. He's a uh, Canadian subject of the crown, but he, he's ha having part of his education in the United States. And he said to me when the Duke of Edinburgh died, he said, uh, and he'd been talking about it with his American friends. He said, you just can't talk about monarchy with the Americans. They think it's just like a celebrity you hire to open supermarkets. What's the benefit of monarchy as an institution as you see it then? The benefit as I see it, and I've done an awful lot of royal tours and I've known some of them, is that it takes the role of the head of state out of politics. Uh, the danger if you don't have a monarch, I know it's accidental, it's archaic, but if you don't have a hereditary family, then you're probably going to have some old political grafter. You're going to be somebody with a political record. Uh, and I think this is going to undermine the, the whole institution. If this is an argument way, way up ahead of us. Uh, I don't have to deal with it now. But I thought the time had come to say what needs to be said about what is ahead of us. Mm. Yeah, and, and the, there is a sense, I think, around the Queen's realms that Republic, with the exception of Barbados, but the Republicans understand they've got to keep a lid on it because she's a, an old lady who's rather popular, and that they're, they're kind of frustrated by that, and that once uh, in the fullness of time there's somebody new there, then suddenly republicanism as a force is going to come roaring back? Oh, absolutely. Um, there was an attempt in Australia in 1999. Everyone thought that the, mm. God, come on, why should you have a, have a head of state who's the other side of the side of the world? And the whole of the Murdoch press was uh, against the monarchy, and the Murdoch press in its home territory was very powerful. But the bizarre thing was that the, uh, the monarchy prevailed. Uh, I don't mean to be taken for granted. I think the Queen's realms with 
will diminish, especially in the Caribbean. Barbados is uh, is uh, is just a start, but but here we are. She's our head of state, and in my obviously I'm a guy Mark with more past than future, but I thought it was a good way to spend these years reflecting on it, uh, and to and to give thanks for what we've got. To be quite honest. Yeah, I hope I hope we're not in that crepuscular uh, Habsburg twilight uh, that they were all feeling in various parts of the Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, in the latter part of the uh, the Great War. Um, th- th- you've been all over the world, though, including the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Uh, what's the problem? Uh, with other systems and do you think they because the queen was born at a time when thrones were tumbling all over Europe and in 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 uh, very occasionally a a monarchy gets restored as in Spain and then it finds it gets tarnished again as happened with Juan Carlos the man who saved uh, democracy in Spain monarchy does depend on the it's an institution but the wrong individual on the throne can wreck the whole business. Uh, we've seen this. Uh, the most severe setback our monarchy ever faced was in 1936 with the abdication of the king, the only, uh, the only king who's ever abdicated. Uh, nothing that has happened since has been as severe. But with the retreat from, foreign, from public duties of, uh, for different reasons of, of Harry and even more Andrew, I think the monarchy is, is going to need to be defended, and I'm not quite sure that its defenders are fully in line. So I've been, what I've been doing, I've been, I've been supplying the, the ammunition. It's a, it's a bit off the beam of everything else I've done in my life, but you're quite right. It goes back to Sarajevo in 1914, and the shot fired by Gavrilo Princip, which brought down the Archduke, and we know what happened since. We lost. 800,000 men in that war, and the Germans and French lost more. Uh, so I think we should be careful of what happens in Sarajevo. And I do suggest, since you are evidently are or about to be a broadcasting legend, that you should spend some time there. I think you would enjoy it. Well, I, I've actually, I've been, I, I haven't spent as much time there as you, but I've been in places like uh, Mostar, for example, which I find... I mean, the great thing about that part of the world is that you're on right on the intersection between yeah. uh, Christendom and Islam. So it's actually a fascinating. They're fascinating. They're turbulent places, but they're fascinating. But but they're also aware of history. When you're in the Balkans, you you must have found this. Those guys are aware of history in a way that we do not seem to be. We we have the arrogance of the present tense. We, we think we got nothing to learn from some guy, 19th century guy, some 17th century guy, because, uh, because progress goes one way and we are more enlightened than they uh, will ever be. There's a much greater awareness of history because it's in, in, in some of these places you've covered, they're still living with it, aren't they? Uh, I, you know, we're talking to each other on the Serbian Christmas Day. Uh, I happen to believe that mm. the Serbs lived their history like no other people on earth. Their defining moment in um, 1389 was a battle against the ter- Serbs, which they which they lost. Uh, and we need, we should have no lessons in the repercussive effects of what happens in Sarajevo. I mean, you've seen them for yourself. I've seen them very up close and personally, and risked my lives for them. And I think that now is a very good time to per- pay, turn our attention back. To what's happening in Serbia and what's happening in Bosnia, where the agreement reached in uh, the, the debt agreement is looking extremely fragile. Uh, we could be drawn back into that again very easily. Yeah, there, there's not a, when you look back, histor- it doesn't seem like a long time since the 1990s. But in fact, three decades is kind of a long time in Balkan stability, because if you look at, uh, you know, whatever, the, the, the kingdom of Yugoslavia lasted about uh, 25 years, I think, all told. Uh, they, they, they have difficulty coming up with permanent arrangements in that part of the world, don't they? 
it's not surprising. They have uh, five or six republics. They have autonomous provinces. They have three religions. They have two scripts, the Roman and the Cyrillic. I think look on back on it, and, and obviously Tito had a lot to do with it and the horrors that happened in the Second World War. But when it fell apart, it fell apart catastrophically, and the rest of Europe got involved. And, and I was involved also in trying to... Uh, uh, I can't do it very discreetly. I know you're not a great fan of the BBC, but I, the BBC was not a, a major player. But what the, the, the images we sent back across the world uh, suggested that there had to be a, an intervention, and there was an intervention which saved lives. But in the course of that war, Mark, 98,000 people were, were, were killed. This is in Europe, in our continent, and in our time. So I, I, I felt very deeply about that, and, I, and I, I still do. And I honestly think it's time that we should turn our attention back to the most troubled corner of Europe. Well, there are interesting things happening. I mean, just to tie together your Balkan interests and your monarchical interests, in Montenegro, the, uh, the rightful king now makes the same salary as the so-called president. They have, a, they have a kind of strange new arrangement where both the king, the, the guy who would be king, and the president uh, represent the country. It's a sort of unusual, it's a, a sort of unusual thing. But thank you very much, Martin Bell. And uh, I look forward to that new book. As you say, it's just what's needed, a defense of monarchy as an institution.